We are on the video record. The time is approximately 2.57. Uh, on council, I wish to honor with us to make a video. Our court reporter is Lynn Bartimus. Uh, Lynn, you may swear the witness. Can you raise your right hand, please, ma'am? Do you swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, I do. Would you state your name for the record, please? Joyce Meyer. And could you spell your last name for the record? M-E-Y-E-R. And ma'am, what is your occupation in general? I'm a Bible teacher, a minister. <clears throat> and I know you're with Joyce Meyer Ministries. Could yes. you briefly give us a description of what that is? Our ministry, um, we have a large teaching ministry that uh, goes around the world by television and radio. We have large um, outreaches around the world to the poor and the needy. A lot of orphanages and support hospitals and medical programs and things like that for the underprivileged. How many employees do you think you have worldwide? About 900. And we'll get right to the point. Do you know the defendant, in this case, Christopher Coleman? Yes, I do. How long have you known him? Since he was a little boy. And how was that? Uh, his parents came to some conferences that I did over in Illinois. I did a weekly meeting over there, and his mother came to it, brought him with him. Now, at some point, did he become a pl an employee of Joyce Meyer's ministry? Yes, he did. And about when was that? Probably about 1998. Okay. So and through 2009, he was with you about 11 years, is yes. that correct? Yes. What kind of employee was he? What, what was his uh, responsibilities there? He was in the security department. Did, was he in general security? Uh, did he move up through the ranks? What happened with that? If I remember correctly, he started in general security, and then he became um, the supervisor of that department. And then uh, when a personal security person that I had left our employee, we offered Chris that job and he took it. And what did that, that job entail then? Did he travel with you? He traveled with us when we did conferences, when we did speaking engagements, and when we went out of the country and did crusades in, in other countries. How often, I mean, was it monthly uh, that you would take one of these uh, longer trips? Uh, well, out of the country we would only go two to three times a year. And then we did 13 conferences here in the U.S. and. Um, there may have been some years where we did even more than that because we, we cut down some as time went by, and then I would do several speaking engagements a year. Okay, so a, a, a different trip where you just go there and back? Yes. As opposed to a conference where you might stay for a few days? Yeah, when we did our conferences, we'd be gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday. If I did a speaking engagement, I would normally just go and come back the same day. And by the end of his employment, <coughs> he was traveling with you to all these conferences? Yes. Uh, what did he do during the conferences? Just made sure that... Everything was safe for me in the crowds, you know, when people wanted to talk to me that it was okay, you know, that was somebody that was okay, that we have pretty large crowds. And so it was mainly just for our safety and to make sure that everything went right. Would he travel ahead of your party to arrange things like that? or Sometimes he went ahead of us, yes, and then sometimes he went with us. And by 2009, at the end of his employment, do you know how much he was making? A uh, hundred thousand dollars. Did he have a company laptop computer? Yes. Did he carry it with him? Yes. Is this something that you saw with him when you made these trips, for example? Yes. He seemed to always have it with him? Yeah, he carried his computer. Okay. Did you ever see anybody else use that computer other than the defendant? No. Okay, uh, May 26th, May 6th, 2009. This is the day after uh, Sherry and her sons were murdered. Uh, did you speak to the police that day? Yes. When you talked to the police on that day, the day after this incident, uh, were you aware whether or not this defendant was having an affair? I wasn't in the beginning of the interview, but I was informed toward the end of the interview that he had confessed to having an affair. But as you came into it that day, you didn't know? I did know not that. know. Were you aware of whether or not he was having marital problems, though, between him and, and I Sherry? I did know that he and Sherry were having some marital problems. How did you know that? Well, she had called our office and talked to... I'm going to object as it calls for hearsay unless she spoke directly with this witness. Okay. Uh, did you speak with Sherry Coleman? No. Okay. Uh, how were you aware that they were having marital problems? She talked to my son, Daniel. And did he relate that to you? He told me so I could talk to Chris about it. And did you, in fact, talk to the defendant about the situation? I did. And it's just generally, what was that conversation? He said that, you know, that they were having issues that um, Sherry had told Daniel that 
I'm going to object. To okay. <laughs> Sherry Coleman told anybody. Okay. Well, my son Daniel told me. <laughs> okay. My son Daniel told her regarding the situation. Uh, although, as well. what the, although what the defendant told you, you could tell us. Uh, what was your conversation with the defendant okay. about the problem? What he told me is that he felt that Sherry was very controlling, that no matter what he did, she wasn't happy, and uh, that they just, in general, you know, were not getting along, and that he was just really tired of it. And uh, at that point, I asked him if, you know, they'd be willing to get some marriage counseling from a pastor that we have at our office and right away he said yes they were willing to do that which they did do do you know about when that was that he talked to you about that it was in the fall 2008 okay. all right did you ever become aware of any threats that this defendant said he had received against himself or his family yes he told me about some the defendant personally told you that yes what did he tell you what, what threats did he report he told me that he had gotten an email uh, threatening his family if he did not stop working for me. And then he told me that um, somebody started putting these threats in his mailbox, at which point I think he became more concerned about them since that meant somebody knew where he lived. He told me that they had taken the information to the police in Belleville and that he also had a detective that lived across the street from him and that they were going to make arrangements to put a camera there on his mailbox to see if they could see who was actually doing it. And you said Belleville. He actually lived in Columbia. Is okay, that right? well, Columbia. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm I sorry. Uh, when do you think that was when you became aware of the threats from him? I think it was probably sometime late March or in April. Of 2009 yeah. then? Yeah. This is spring. Okay. Uh, to your knowledge, had any other employees ever been singled out in that way? No. Did you have other employees that uh, provided security as this defendant did? One other one, yes. And uh, there wasn't any threats or anything to that person? No. Okay, this was all from a conversation you had with police on May the 6th, but on May the 12th, did you again ask to talk to the police? Yes. Why did you do that? Um, about a month prior to the beginning of May, say during the month of April, I just felt like he wasn't, I was just noticing that he wasn't as attentive to his duties. He was forgetting things that were just not normally him and um, just in general not quite as engaged. I noticed a personal cell phone in his car one day that was being charged up and I asked him about that because I'd never seen him with it because he had a ministry phone. That was what he carried all the time. And um, he just said it was a personal <laughs> cell phone. And I started asking another question. And then I just thought, you know, it's really none of my business if he has a personal cell phone. So I just, I let that go. And um, did, so. did he during that period of time ever uh, call in sick for work? On May the 4th, he called and told me that he wasn't feeling good and asked if he could take the day off. May the 4th, 2009. Right. Was that unusual for the defendant? Yes. He was, I mean, he worked, worked for us 11 years, so I can't swear that he never took a day off, but I didn't remember him ever calling me and saying that he didn't feel good and wanted to take off. He was just very, he was just always there. And how were you informed on May the 4th, 2009, that he wasn't coming to work that day? He called me in the morning and asked me if he could take the day off. Is there anything else? Uh, did, did the defendant go on a trip with you during that period of time to the state of Florida? Yes. Was there anything about that trip, again, something you observed directly of the defendant, that caused you now to be suspicious? Well, he stayed there. Um, he said he wanted to stay down there for a few days after our trip was over, after the working part of our trip was over. He said he was going to visit these friends, a girlfriend of Sherry's after I found out that that was the girl that he'd been having the affair with, made me kind of suspicious then as to why he stayed there. And that was sometime during this period of time, late 2008, early 2009? Yes, I think it was in 2009. Okay. Uh, and was that unusual for him to stay after when you'd gone oh, on yeah, a trip? Yeah, and especially he was by himself, so. Okay. 
And again, in retrospect, that made you wonder. Yeah. Okay. Now, I have to ask you, if the defendant were having an affair, if you had known that at the time, and I understand you've testified that you didn't, what effect would that have had on his employment? If he would have been having an adulterous affair while he was still married, then it could have definitely affected his job. Okay. Were there persons over the years that were terminated in situations like that? We had situations where they were, yes. And in fact, he was married uh, during the period of time that he worked for you, married yes. to Sherry Coleman, correct? Yes. Were there other persons uh, who had adulterous affairs while married uh, whose employment was terminated at Joyce Meyer Ministry? Yes. For that reason? Yes. Okay. Uh, now I have to ask you about the distinction here. What if it was a divorce as opposed to an adulterous affair? Each situation is handled totally separately based on the circumstances. We have many people that work for us that have been divorced and um, a person is not necessarily do they lose their job because they get a divorce. It wouldn't have been the divorce so much as the, the immorality. So for instance, if a person in your employment, uh, if their spouse filed for divorce against them, uh, and perhaps they had little control over that, you might leave them in your employment? That's oh, a possibility? Certainly. Okay. And on the other end of the spectrum, if a person was having an adulterous affair and then filed for divorce from their spouse to be with that person, then their employment may have been terminated. May have been, yes. Okay. Do you think there was any situations of that in the past where someone was actually terminated under those kind of circumstances? I believe so. Okay. Okay, at some point you did learn uh, that the defendant was having an affair, is that correct? Yes. Was that from the police or how did you actually find that out? Well, the police initially said that he had confessed to the affair. Okay. What effect did that have on his employment? And I don't know what, what happened at the end of his employment. Before you answer that question, I just want to object again to this whole line of questioning regarding had this witness known at the time he was having an affair because I don't think that at all has any relevance <coughs> to any issues here because the fact of the matter is, and I think this witness testified that she did not learn of the affair until the police informed her of the affair sometime after Mr. Sometime after the homicides were committed and some later date and this witness never knew prior to that that he was having an affair. So I think any questioning about what this witness or what would have happened to his employment at that time are not relevant. Well, I understand all that, but I think the record will be clear that what I asked her was what happened after she was aware that he was having an affair. What actually happened? Okay, I understand that. I'm not okay. ob objecting. To, I'm all right. So that's what I'm asking. Uh, once you were aware that he was having an affair, and obviously he's no longer employed with you, what happened to his employment? He resigned. Okay. Did he discuss that with you? No, that was handled through our COO. Okay. Uh, did you fire him? Did you I didn't terminate know. his appointment? Okay, so once that situation became uh, common knowledge, the defendant resigned employment with Joyce Meyer Ministry? He asked to resign, yes. Okay. And, and you accepted his resignation? Yes. Thank you. I have no further questions. Ms. Meyer, uh, Mr. Coleman was an excellent employee during his 11 years at Joyce Meyer Ministry, isn't that yes, correct? Yes, he was. And he started the security department from the, the ground up pretty much? I believe so and you had no complaints of him as, as an employee at Joyce Meyer Ministry? Nope. And the things that you testified to about your suspicions only became your suspicions after Mr. Coleman was arrested and charged with these offenses, is that correct? Yes. Only after looking back, correct? Yes. They were not suspicious or unusual at, at the time of these events? No, they were, they were things that I felt were a little bit unusual, but because he'd worked for us so long and I had no reason to think otherwise, I just, I, just like, mm -hmm. I didn't know. Yeah. Okay. Now, you testified about uh, some marital problems between Chris and Sherry Coleman, and you became aware of those problems, and your understanding of those problems is that they were just normal type communication problems or marital problems that would be typical in marriages, is that correct? Yeah. And you spoke with Mr. Coleman about that and directed him or suggested that he get counseling with Mike Shepard. I asked him if they would get counseling with Mike and, and he said yes. So immediately said yes, is that right? Yes. Okay. 
and he followed through with that counseling? Yes. Mr. Shepard, what's, what's his position? At, is he employed by Joyce Meyer he's, Ministry? He's in our employment. Is he a, a pastor? or He's what? a pastor. He functions as like a, a chaplain for our ministry and uh, does a lot, of, um, a lot of work within the departments, a lot of leadership teaching, just a lot of different things like that. He helps oversee our church in the inner city. Is he a licensed counselor, a mar marital, marriage counselor? He's a licensed pastor. Okay. Is that, well, I don't think that answers my question, though. I mean, is he a licensed counselor or marriage counselor? No. Is that one of his normal parts of his job is to engage in marriage counseling or other types of counseling? Yes. And uh, you sent Mr. Coleman to, to counseling because you believe that could benefit him and his marriage with Sherry Coleman, is that correct? Yes. And in fact, it, it t based on your observations, after they had gone to several counseling sessions, things uh, had seemed to have gotten better between Chris and Sherry Coleman, is that correct? It wasn't anything I observed, it was what I was told. He told me they were doing better, and the counselor, Mike Shepard, indicated that he felt they were doing better. Okay. So was Mr. Shepard supposed to report back to you on how, how the counseling was progressing? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, he did, he, and he, he did report back to you yes. that things were going pretty well, is that yes. right? And I think you testified before before that, uh, or earlier, that that Sherry Coleman never contacted you directly no, about these not. marital problems. Is that correct? Yes. Now, while you, Mr. Coleman was working at the ministry, uh, you were aware that he had looked into other job opportunities? Yes. And uh, one of those opportunities included starting his own business, is that right? Yes. And at some point, did he ever, <clears throat> to your knowledge, did he ever make any attempts to, to leave the ministry, ministry's employment? No. Not, not to your knowledge? No. Okay. Did he ever express any concerns to you about spending more time with his, his wife or his family or taking more time off? No. What, what was your general attitude, would you say, as far as uh, Mr. Coleman being able to take time off and spend with his family? I mean, obviously he had a pretty pretty hectic uh, travel schedule based on what you testified to earlier. He did, but he also got sufficient comp time and he was allowed to make his own schedule. I even encouraged him to take more time off than what he did and um, suggested to him that he spend more time with, with Sherry during the weekdays when he was home. Okay. Are you aware uh, of an instance in, I believe in May of 2008, when Mr. Coleman requested time off for August of that year to spend time with his family and celebrate his 10th wedding anniversary with Sherry Coleman and he was turned down? Yes. And there, were, there was an out of, out of overseas trip, I guess, scheduled in August? An overseas trip, which was were very important for us and probably as far as needing security, some of the most important ones okay and so and mr coleman requested to, to miss that trip and have one of the other security people go instead of him is that correct i don't think there was another security person that could have went okay. instead of him he was pretty much it as far as that level of security but we asked him if he could take take the weekend before the weekend after okay but he specifically requested to miss the trip and, and the minute or i don't know who, he didn't but somebody. he did not request it of me he talked to me about it told me that it was very important to Sherry, and um, if I recall, the request was put in pretty late. Okay, but he All was denied, plans he was denied that time off, right? Not from me, okay. but... But from the ministry, whoever. Yeah, I guess. Right. If, you, if you say he was, then right. I, he was. I, I, well... Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I didn't handle those things, so I don't really know. Now, you, you, you testified that, uh, that uh, divorce is not... Uh, 
an automatic automatic grounds for dismissal from employment at Joyce Meyer ministry, ministry. That's correct. And in fact, I think you also testified that several people had, who have worked at the ministry have been divorced yes. and did not lose their employment. Right. And to the best of your knowledge, Mr. Coleman loved his kids and was very good to them. Is that correct? To the best of my knowledge. Now, as far as Mr. Coleman taking sick days, I, you testified that that was the only time he ever called you directly to, to say he wasn't coming in that day. Is that right? To the best of my knowledge, yes. But that's not to say he didn't take other sick days here and there over the 11 years that he worked there. Correct? I can't say that he, that he didn't. Okay. I just don't remember that he did. Okay. I mean, you don't have any knowledge as to whether he called Dan or David or any no, of the other really. superiors to request time off or sick no. days here and there. I think I'm done, but if I have just a moment off the record to consult with my uh, counsel here. We are going off the video record. The time is approximately 320. We are back on the video record. The time is approximately 322. Counsel, please proceed. Thank you. I just have a few follow-up questions. Ms. Meyer, are you aware of a uh, conference in Houston that Mr. Coleman did not attend because he was ill? No. With respect to... Um, let me ask, ask you this way. Was Mr. Coleman in charge of his own schedule? Yes. Okay. And uh, so do you have any knowledge as to whether he would um, change his schedule, uh, you know, have other people cover for him on certain, for certain things or, or on certain days, things like that? Well, as far as his duties with me, I would have been aware of any change if it was something he was supposed to do with me, but it w if it was a day when he was doing office business pertaining to security, I wouldn't have necessarily had any awareness of that. Okay. And did he deal with you directly on a lot of business items, or did he deal with other people uh, in the ministry on scheduling, you know? Other people more than me. I don't have anything further. There's only one issue I'd like to ask you just a couple of questions about. You've been asked about an August 08 trip uh, when uh, the defendant requested not to have to go on the trip. You, you recall what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Were there any other trips like that, any other instances when he requested to not go uh, but was denied that request? No. And I, w when you denied the request or when somebody at Joyce Meyer denied it, uh, was comp time, was, were different weekends made available to him around the same time? Oh, yes. And is that the only trip that you can recall uh, when the defendant made such a request and it wasn't granted? Yes. Did you speak with the defendant about the amount of time he was spending in your employment, in his duties? Did you uh, advise the defendant to spend less time, to spend more time at home? I encouraged him. He was a very hard worker, and I encouraged him to take more time off, more time to be with his family. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. I'm good. Thanks. We are going off the video record. The time is approximately 324, and the deposition lasted approximately 25 minutes.